Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. This is a continuation of the previous video. Apologize for the background noise. There's a fan off in the distance, uh, which I think is broken. It shouldn't be running right now, but anyway, um, I'll continue. So I was talking about metabolism. So most people are familiar with metabolic rate or metabolism in the way that, um, you know, if your metabolism is high, you can eat a lot and you stay thin. If your metabolism is low, then everything you eat uh, gains weight for yourself, right? So you can talk about people having high and low metabolisms or fast and slow metabolisms. So this is not unique to humans, okay? So it's for all animals, okay? It's just re metabolism is the sum total of all the biochemical reactions that take place in an organism's body. Every living thing has a metabolism from a bacterium to a plant to you, okay? So metabolic rate is how quickly fuels like sugars are broken down to keep the organism cells running, okay? There's differences in metabol metabolic rate among species and the environmental conditions and activity level of an individual organism will also affect its metabolic rate. In terms of environmental conditions, we're talking about temperature. You may recall in the previous video, and this is crucial, that if the temperature increases 10 degrees Celsius, the me metabolic rate doubles. If we talk about the two degree global average temperature rise from the Paris Agreement, then that it represents an increase in metabolic rate of about 20%, 20 to 30%, according to, according to this uh, book uh, by Jeffrey West, Scale. Okay, a modest two degree change in ambient temperature leads to a 20% to 30% change in growth and mortality rates. This is a huge increase, 20% increase in mortality rates of, of organisms. Okay, so um, metabolism, okay, so all animals need food as a source of energy. Okay, these molecules have energy in their chemical bonds. Some of your body's metabolic rate, um, like uh, the ones, uh, reactions, like the ones that make up cellular respiration, they extract this energy and they capture part of it um, as AD, ATP, so ADP, adenosine diphosphate, gets converted to triphosphate energy. This energy carrying molecule can power other reactions that keep your cells running in your body. Okay, this is just a breakdown of the food, proteins, carbs, and fats, cellular respiration, ADP, ATP, the energy carrying molecule, if you like. Okay, I don't want to get into huge detail, but this is a good overall view. I need you to, to get you to just uh, bear with me and learn a few of these things because they're crucial when we talk about climate change, how it affects organisms. Okay, so I won't go into too much detail here, um, but no energy transfer is perfectly efficient. There's always a loss according to the law of physics. Anytime energy changes, some of it's converted into a non-usable form, much as is, is heat, okay? This is not necessarily a bad thing. Some animals that can use and regulate their metabolic heat production to maintain a relatively constant body temperature. These are the endotherms. These are the mammals, like us and birds, we're endotherms. Mammals, like humans, as well as birds. Ectotherms, on the other hand, are animals that don't use metabolic heat to maintain a constant body temperature. Their body temperature changes with the temperature of the environment. For example, lizards and snakes. It gets cold, their body temperature is cold. It takes on the temperature of the external condition. So here we are. Okay, here is the, uh, here is the endotherms like the mouse. They generate metabolic heat to maintain their internal temperature. This is their body temperature. This is the external temperature, outside temperature. As the outside temperature changes, the internal temperature does not change within limits. You go too high, it starts going up. Bad, go too low, starts going down. But there's a, reg there's a range where it's regulated. These are the 
ectotherms, like a snake or a lizard. Okay, so this is the external temperature. This is the internal temperature. It goes up, it, it matches it. Okay, 30 degrees, 30 degrees at the internal body temperature. So these are the ectotherms. Okay, so again, uh, we can talk about it. it's energy. So human, male, like about 100 watts, or like a 100 watt light bulb. That's how much heat we put out. Okay, you can also talk about metabolic rate as oxygen consumed or carbon dioxide produced. Okay, um, and uh, we can also talk about the overall metabolic rate of an animal. So the metabolic rate will be, it scales with mass to the three quarter power scaling law. Okay, um, but you can also talk about it on a per mass basis. Okay, so on a per mass basis, you can compare organisms of different sizes. And for ectotherms, we talk about basal metabolic rate, BMR, for, for, for sorry, for endotherms, and for ectotherms, standard metabolic rate. Okay, so uh, we've already saying for ectotherms, this SMR will vary with temperature. Endotherms have a high metabolic rate and high energy needs because they have to maintain the constant body temperature. That takes energy. Okay, so we can talk about, but now related to body size, which one has a higher basal metabolic rate, a mouse or an elephant? The elephant's gonna win, okay? Way more metabolizing tissue in an elephant than a mouse. But if you look at a per mass metabolic rate, the situation flips. A gram of mouse tissue metabolizes more than 10 times faster than a gram of elephant tissue. Okay, so here we go, for example, you know, here's the mouse, this is the scaled up mouse, also known as an elephant, you know, huge mass difference. The metabolic rate per gram is much higher for the mass than for the elephant. Okay, now this, be, this becomes crucial, and I'll talk about this um, I'll talk about this now. So this is one of the crucial charts. This is metabolic rate in watts, power, as a function of body mass in kilograms. So we've got the elephant up here, we've got the mouse here, here's dogs, here's man, about 100 watts. Humans are about 100 watts. Man, bigger body mass than females, so females are a bit lower. So basically, this just scales through different organisms. It tracks almost a nice straight line here. This is a logarithmic scale, right? It varies by a factor of 10 here. This is 10 higher than this, this is 10 higher. It's not a linear scale, it's a log-log plot, and it comes like this, and the slope is uh, that three quarters, okay? So, so basically, this scales, and it scales because Elephants are scaled up versions of mice. And I talked about circulatory systems being similar and respiratory systems being similar. They're space filling systems and they all have, the end of them is all similar. The termination of them is all similar to bring oxygen to cells. Okay, so this is a very interesting relationship. Um, now we go to, if this is heart weight rate, if we plot heart rate versus life expectancy, then you see this. So the heart rate of the mouth of the very small creatures is very, very high. This is beats per minute. When you go to whales, 20 beats per minute. Very, very low heart rate. They live a long time. Very short heart rate, or, or very, very fast, very small creature, very, very fast heart rate. They don't live for very long, just a few years. Okay, we're all on here. Now man used to be over here, but because of medical advances, it's pushed us over here. Okay, um, so let's keep going here. How many heartbeats does each species get in a lifetime? This is fascinating. The answer is, okay, what about, the answer is, each animal gets around a billion beats. Doesn't matter the size, the species, each animal gets around a billion heartbeats in their lifetime. About, humans and chickens are outliers. We get 2.21 billion on average, chickens get 2.17 billion heartbeats on average. 
but a lot of animals are about the one billion line. Horses, pigs, rabbits, elephants, cats, whales, you name it. Bigger, small, stronger, fast, faster, slow, fatter, strong. Okay, it seems like a magic number. Okay, so this is an interesting chart here. This is the uh, creature, so human, the weight. This is lifetime heartbeats and animal size. So billions of heartbeats. We get the 2.21, cats about just over a billion, small dog, medium dog, large dogs, hamsters. There's chicken, which is the other outlier, monkey, and so on. You go down. There, a lot of them are close to a billion heartbeats. Okay, so this is fascinating. Okay, so here's a graph showing life expectancy and heartbeats. So a billion is 10 to the ninth heartbeats. Okay, there's some, so that it's almost vertical. It's tilted over a little bit, but it's very, very similar. So all species have about the similar, a similar number of heartbeats in their lifetime. Okay, so what does that mean? When you increase the temperature, you increase the metabolic rate, you increase the heartbeat, the heart rate. Therefore, you decrease the life expectancy because if you have a faster heart rate, you're gonna reach that 2.21 billion beats on average quicker than somebody with a lower heart rate. What about if you go run a marathon and you get your heart rate up really, really high? Does that shorten your life? No, because it lowers your resting heart rate. And your resting heart rate is there all the time, so it actually lowers the overall beats and it makes you live longer in general. Okay, so this is uh, an example. This, this graph shows VO2, so oxygen consumption, which you can relate to metabolic rate, as I mentioned. These are ectotherms, so ambient or external temperature. As temperature of the environment increases, the heart rate, the metabolic rate increases. The heart rate increases, the animal lives for a shorter length of time. These are ectotherms, their body takes on the temperature of the external environment. These are endotherms like humans. So there's a range here, the thermal neutral zone, we can regulate our internal body temperature, okay? Um, so our metabolic rate and so on. If we go to f too high a temperature, this is the upper critical temperature, lower critical temperature. If we go either higher or lower outside of this sweet spot, then the metabol metabolic rate increases, okay? So if it gets too hot, you know, our metabolic rate increases, we consume more oxygen, if it gets too cold, we do the same thing because we have to actually heat up our body. As the external temperature decreases, we have to, our body works harder to maintain that, that, that temperature. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a key factor. Okay, so this is a paper from, um, it's, it's not that recent, it's 2010. Okay, there's not a lot of papers, but this is Global Metabolic Impacts of Recent Climate Warming. And what it basically shows is global warming ha is having a profound and diverse effect on organisms because it's changing the metabolic rates, okay? Especially with, um, because the temperature dependence is exponential and not linear in ectotherms, so tropical ectotherms, creatures that can't regulate their body temperature, their body temperature takes on that of the external environment, in the tropics, they're getting huge shifts in metabolic rate and they're suffering. They're, and there's mass mortalities occurring. So here's the, form, here's the equation. The uh, metabolic rate depends on mass to the three quarter power and depends on temperature exponentially. So here we go, this is the changes in temperature, Arctic versus the blue is the north temperate, tropical is the red. This is the changes in the metabolic rates. So because the trop, you know, the tropics, so the tropics is more sensitive to the metabolic rate here, increasing more. And if you do um, plots here, this is the change in metabolic rate. So this is a change in temperature, Arctic warming, Arctic temperature amplification, the metabolic rate, it's the creatures in the tropics that are being affected disproportionately. So this is crucial information, thank you.